In between the last video and this one, I changed the code a little bit. What I did was I took everything where we were doing creating the play screen, the title and things like that, and I put in a function called create play screen so that we can call it. In general, the more you can kind of encapsulate and, and functionize your code, the better it is. And we just call that from down here. We do create play screen and then start game. And the other thing I did was I went ahead and typed in three lines of code here under spawn enemy. We're creating a local variable called enemy and we're setting it to this beetleship.ping. And then we're setting the X and the Y and we're using Lua's math library and the random function. So math.random and then we can pass in two things. The first one is the minimum number we want and the second one is the maximum number we want. And in this case we're using something from Corona called display.content width minus 20 and that way we don't have to use a hard coded number because that number, the width of the display, that's going to be different whether you're on an, an iPhone or an iPhone 5 or a Galaxy Tab or a Kindle Fire or whatever. So by using these variables that Corona SDK makes available, content width, content height, and so on, we don't have to worry really about which device it's playing on. It should work on all of them. So we're setting the X and the Y to a random value. And the only thing we have to do now is call spawn enemy. And we could do that just right down here. So let's try that. Okay, and there's our enemy sitting there. Let me run this again. So you can see he does show up in a diff different location. One of the things though is we don't actually want him to show up right away. We, we want the title to come in first and so on, and then the enemy to show up. So we're gonna move spawn enemy, and we'll just put that in show title. So right after, actually right along with the title showing, we will go ahead and show the enemy. So he doesn't, he's not there yet. And he didn't show up. What happens? I can see there's an error attempt to call global spawn enemy. Spawn enemy is a local function. Can't be a local function if we're going to call it from earlier in the program. So all we have to do is go up here to set up forward references, local spawn enemy. That lets Lua know that, hey, there's something called spawn enemy coming later. And that way it's not surprised when it sees it here. Let's go ahead and run this now. That's better. Okay, that's pretty good. So it waits until things are in position and then this guy shows up on the screen. All right, so let's tap this guy and uh, make, him, make him vanish whenever we tap him. To do that, we add an event listener to that display object. The event listener is being passed uh, an event name. In this case, it's tap. We want to look for tap events. And the listener is ship smash and this is the name of a function a listener is a function that is called when this event happens so we're telling corona hey you've got that enemy thing there add an event listener and listen for a tap when a tap happens call this function this function down here ship smash is passed an event record part of that event record tells us which object was tapped and we can get that local Obj equals event dot target. Event dot target will give us whatever object was tapped. And so now that we know which object it was, we can actually get rid of it. Display dot remove obj. All right, let's give this a shot right now. And when we tap the little guy, yeah, he vanishes. Let's run. Let's try him again here. Cool. Okay, pretty good, pretty good so far. And just for the fun of it, let's go ahead and add that to the background. And to the planet. Okay, so now we have an event listener attached to the background. It's looking for a tap. When the tap happens, ship smash is going to be called. It's not a ship. Well, Lua doesn't really care. Corona doesn't care. It just says it's the name of a function. It could be the name of a function called foo. It's going to pass an event record, and that event record is going to have 
one of the parameters is going to be a target. Target will tell you what was tapped and then it will vanish that item. So now when I tap the little guy, he's going to vanish. But I'm going to tell you something that's going to happen. At the same time, the background is going to vanish too. And that's because when you tap something, the tap actually happens and then the tap keeps going and it falls through to whatever's in the back. To keep that from happening, when you do a tap or a touch, return true from that event listener and you won't have that problem. Now we'll be able to tap the little guy. He stays there. Tap the planet. Tap the background. And they all vanish. You know what would be really cool is if when we if when we tap this guy and get rid of him that there's something like sound effects.